What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are diving onto the opposite side of the spectrum when we're talking about the best WWE AEW action figures of the year, man. We are diving into some of the worst of the year, all right? If you guys missed my top 10 WWE elites of the year, if you missed my top 10 AEW figures from the year, definitely go check those videos out. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you get my WWE top 10 video to 1,000 likes, we will be doing an epic giveaway so go give that video a like. Go give the AEW one a like as well. If we can get both those videos to 1,000 likes, we will do a big epic giveaway, and I would greatly appreciate it. So today we're on the opposite side of that, like we said. Today it's just going to be MDT kind of ranting a little bit, man. We're going to go one by one through all these figures, and I'm going to break down some of the worst figures that we saw this year from AEW and WWE, and just kind of talk about, you know, what went wrong, you know, where these figures missed, all these different things. Now, there's probably some other figures that could have been included included in today's video, but uh, I went light on it. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be too crazy on the worst figures of the year, but I did want to give it its own video. You know, I thought about doing top tens and stuff, but then I thought, you know what? Let's put it all in one video. Let's break it down. 2021's worst of the worst, and let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start out first with this figure over here. If you guys didn't know, this is the AEW Unrivaled Series number 5 Frankie Kazarian. Not a terrible figure at first glance, but you guys will quickly notice he doesn't have any thigh cut. He has an oversized head, and he is a big shelf warmer, man. He's not one of those guys that moves pegs, and you know, it's not really his fault per se. Uh, you know, they were the first ever AEW Tag Team Champions, but at the end of the day, man, it's just not a pleasing figure to look at, and his head sculpt is too big, and no kick pad rotation is just devastating to the dome. That is right to the head. That is something you can't have, and that is why Frankie Kazarian made it into today's video. Now, if we fast forward over to Pac, you guys will notice that these figures are very, very similar. And you'll also notice that Pac does not have lower leg rotation. A huge opportunity missed there, especially for a guy like Pac, an athletic guy like Pac. You gotta include the kick pad rotation. I felt that that was much needed. Also, you guys will notice that this has an Elite 55 Neville head sculpt on it, which is a head sculpt that I think looks much better than the standard head sculpt that he came with. So that is the reason that I had to include it, man. The head sculpt was dreadful. I don't even have the original anymore I don't think it's somewhere buried in the ocean and I don't know where the hell it went so I, I don't know but a lot of people love this figure like don't get me wrong it can pose around a little bit you guys can see the separation there but it's you know like it moves around pretty well but not having kick pad rotation really bothers me and that's you know that's that's something that a figure must have you know all these figures elite unrivaled doesn't matter man if you ain't got some kick pad rotation you can just you just go to hell moving on next guys we have a pair of young bucks now these young bucks I want to like them. I honestly think like from the waist down, they're pretty solid. Like I don't really have a huge gripe with them, but I would say that I prefer the, the cloth tassels, honestly. Like I, I don't like how we have this like singular mold here for the lower leg. Like I know you get this like kick pad or like this is one like kick pad per se, like this whole piece here, but I would, uh, I like the way they did the Unrivaled Series 3, honestly, and if they went forward with it like this in the future, it wouldn't be like a deal breaker, but I feel like these make the, the you know, like these bell-bottom style pants make it really hard to stand. We saw that with the Series 1 figures, and I just really like the way they did the Series 3. I thought the Series 3 were a lot better, and if they had did them that way, I felt like it would have been a lot better, but I'm not even griping on the gear or the way the, the lower half was made. It's more of just this boring, awful top half for Matt and Nick Jackson. Like, they don't have any hand tape whatsoever. It's just very plain Jane, and then they use the Series 1 head for Nick, and then it's like a kind of, it's not the exact same as the Series 3 for Matt, but for Nick, they use the Series 1 head sculpt. This is, mind you, six series later, they're still using the same head sculpt. I don't like that. And then, uh, this head right here is just dreadful, man. The way it sits on this body, like, he has no neck whatsoever. You can't even really articulate it because of the hair piece. Like, the hair is so long and wacky looking that the, the head, like, look at it. He has no neck whatsoever, and he just looks odd. Like, look at that. Not an appealing figure. Both of these are not very appealing. Easily the worst bucks they've given us so far. I definitely want to get my hands on some more Series 3 or some more Series uh, 1B to do some torso swaps and head swaps on these guys because Jesus Christ, they look dreadful right now. I got to get them fixed up there, but if you want them the way they came out of the packaging, this is the way they look. Just not a good set of young bucks. I like This is what sucks about collecting mock figures because now I have to get a freaking set of these mock and I, I just do not like the way they look. So hopefully uh, you know the next pair of 
Young Bucks that we get will be a lot better than these, but the Series 7 Bucks were not very good at the slightest. If we're moving on forward, ladies and gentlemen, we have AEW Unrivaled Series 3 Riho. Now, honestly, from the neck down, not a bad figure. I just think this head sculpt is pretty, pretty jacked, man. I, I just don't see Riho whatsoever. I think they did her a major disservice. I think they did the same thing to Nyla Rose, though, because her head sculpt is not very good either, I don't think. I think, like, it just, like, the likeness just got away from them, and I think that they could be much, much better and stronger likenesses. Another thing about the Nyla Rose is that the boots are very jacksy, and they do not have lower leg rotation again. Like, there's no boot swivel right here. You can see the peg hole going right through where the boot swivel should be, which is pretty upsetting. And this figure's not very accurate. If you, if you look up different images, I believe it's not very accurate in a lot of ways, and the, the head sculpt pops off very easily, and when you try to do any sort of ab crunch whatsoever, the figure's waist pops off. So, I hope that the next figure of Nyla Rose is a lot better, and the same thing goes for Riho over here, because I think that Riho is actually not horrible, but the lower leg rotation is, again, just such a killer. Like, honestly, it actually stands pretty well. It can kick forward and do all the things, but it needs some lower leg rotation, and this figure shell formed like a... This thing just melted pegs, man. It was warm and so damn hard that it was melting things off pegs, and it's not necessarily, again, her fault. She's a good talent, all those different things. Just not a lot of people knew who she was. She didn't reach a wide market, and I think that hurt her a lot. She also is missing a belly button, or you can faintly see it. She's got some damn alien stuff going on. Moving on forward, we're getting into MJF from Unmatched Series 2. Now, this one's kind of a nitpick. It's not the worst figure of all time, but I put it below the MJF Series 6 Unrivaled because the black and gold is a better gear than the black and red, and it had, like, his plaid MJF pattern wrist tape, and I think the head sculpt was slight... And I think the head sculpt was slightly better than this one right here. So for those reasons, I think that the MJF uh, Unmatched Series number two was worse than that figure. And uh, I, I just, I don't know, man. This one was just a boring release for me. Hopefully his next figure will be a lot better. It'll be a lot more uh, toyetic. It'll have a lot more things going on, a lot more flashy. So I went with the Unmatched Series two MJF as a worse figure. Next up is Lance Archer. Now this one actually got my, uh, my top figure from Unmatched, or Unrivaled series number seven, but it wasn't saying a whole lot. Like, I think the head sculpt is brilliant. I think the molds and the different sculpts we have going on is brilliant, but just the way his torso looks so flabby, and his arms are super duper skinny, and his legs are super long, he just looks so... I don't know, the proportions on this figure are so weird to me. I do not like them. It looks very odd. I also think that, you know, I just think that he could have used a bigger torso, more muscular torso. This torso just looks weird, doesn't it? It reminds me a lot of, like, R3 Jax or something. He's got his tattoos going on, which is cool. And I still think he's the best figure in Series 7 because Series 7 was just a very, very low wave. Good Lord, it was not a good wave. This figure is definitely the best of the bunch, but it's not saying very much. So the head sculpt's very, very strong, but the proportions and things like that just do not work well for this figure, and you hate to see it. Next up, we have... I guess we might as well get through our AEW figures, then we'll dive into the Mattel figures. But next up, we have FTR. And both of these guys, you guys will see that I've already replaced their head sculpts. Both of their head sculpts were not very good. Good, you know, I still think that like the figures themselves, they weren't like dreadful, but they still have like a weird look going on for them. I still like, uh, you know, the white gear and everything like that. It was mainly their head sculpts. I felt like Dax Harwood was worse though. His was just whoosh, man. His was whoosh. The head sculpt looked nothing like him. I didn't think it looked like him whatsoever. And these two guys were also a part of Series 7. So all of Series 7 was in this video. You had Nyla, Lance Archer, the Bucks, and FDR all made it here in the video. Uh, just, just not good figures man just not really strong figures at least head sculpts wise and they had to make it in the video and last but not least the one of the worst AEW figures of the year is going to be Jake Hager now I did fix him up a bit we did a bunch to him we put knee pads on him we added some black hand tape we switched the head sculpt with a basic Mattel because this head sculpt right here is the one that came on it and this is just not good man like why is he ginger why is it like this super brown red color makes no sense whatsoever he is definitely like blonde or dirty blonde they gave him this weird ginger color. I know that they gave him a, a running change and everything, but at the end of the day, man, this this is just dreadful. Even the likeness is very weird. It's a weird-looking head sculpt. It just wasn't my
my favorite. It wasn't very good. Now, I will say, like, since I fixed it up, it's a lot better, but it still isn't my favorite. You know, it is it is what it is. I like Jake Hager a lot. I like Jack Swagger, but uh, his next figure, I hope, is a lot more improved and can move a lot better and, you know, the proportions and things of that nature. We will have to see about that. I do like the one-of-one -one sculpts that AEW always gives us, but at the end of the day, those were uh, those were our handfuls of bad AEW figures this year, man. It was, a, it was a rough one in some aspects, but we also got some damn bangers. If you guys missed my top 10, definitely go check those out. Now, as far as Mattel is concerned, these are really, these kind of embody the worst of the worst of the year. And I'll go into explanation with that. Now, right here, you guys will see the ringside exclusive NWO John Cena. Not my favorite figure. It's it's very boring. It's another Kurt Angle Shield gear ringside exclusive. Just, why do we get these terrible ringside exclusives, man? We need some good, like, nostalgic, very awesome exclusives. I feel like the, the Champa from NXT wasn't so bad. I liked it. You know, it was a good figure and everything. I just don't. Like, why is that an exclusive? You know, what makes that epic and an exclusive worthy? I'm not sure, but I was not a fan of this exclusive. I just think it's a very just thrifty, just not a, a one that people seek out. And it may have sold really well. It's just, not, I don't know. You guys can let me know what you guys think, but I think they could have done better. Like, pulling from the Ruthless Aggression era, pulling from the Attitude era, pulling from either even older eras than that, man. Get the nostalgia pop of the ringside online exclusives, not the, like, newer school like this. It's like such a one-off. And then you had the Firefly Funhouse Bray that was garbage. The Walt that's a good one. That's a good one-off right there from NXT. A guy that you don't see mainly. A guy that's never had a figure before. Something like that works. But I think in this case for the John Cena NWO, it was just a miss. Next up for re-releases, this Bret Hart is a perfect execution for the re-releases. This is just not a good figure, man. It's just it's just not. This head sculpt is totally like wonky. He looks like a, a Disney character, grandpa or something. I, I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, this is not a figure that I find appealing whatsoever. It's still has like the 20 year old like ankle joints and legs and I do like that he has double jointed arms and the cloth shirt and stuff but at the same time I don't think it was a much needed release I think that we could have definitely gotten something else in its place and I don't think it was one that was definitely necessary here at the, at the time of getting this figure and you can say that about a lot of like these repaints I'd say the HBK from that wave was a damn good repaint because it was something we hadn't seen before but this is pretty much just a carbon copy of what we've seen before and last but not least the worst First Mattel figure of the year, I would say, is going to be this Elite Trish, and it's going to be this head sculpt, man. I don't know what this is. I don't know how this happened. It does not look like Trish Stratus whatsoever. The body mold doesn't look anything like Trish Stratus. The face scan looks nothing like Trish Stratus. It's just one of those ones that was a total miss, and I think we can all abundantly agree that this Trish figure is hot garbage. I, I mean, I, I, I love the accessories. I like the cowboy hat. I like the black trench coat, but uh, it just doesn't represent Trish Stratus from that era very odd looking hair and face sculpt looks nothing like Trish from that time and yeah, I mean, that that pretty much is it. I know that I got on here and ranted a lot about figures, man, but that's what I wanted to do in today's video. I just wanted to get on here and just run quickly through the worst stuff that we got for wrestling figures this year. And I would love to know what you guys think of my list. Uh, also, let me know what yours is down below. I'm sure I missed plenty, right? I mean, there's got to be plenty out there that I missed in today's video as far as like worst WWE, AEW action figures. I think that there was probably more bad AEW w figures over mattel but i'm not entirely sure about that you know I, I don't know all the specifics and stuff like that again i didn't take a ton of time on it i tried to think because i didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on the worst of the worst man i wanted to you know i, I gave everything its praise but i don't want to spend like a negative nancy over here just farting and shishing on every single figure that we got and you know things we didn't get and things like that but hopefully this next year will be even better for all companies involved and i think it will be i think that uh, every single year we're going to continue to improve and I think that's been proven and 2022 is going to be the year of Jazzwear. I think Jazzwares and AEW is going to be the coming up figure brand this year and Mattel is also going to put out some bangers. I already know that both companies are going to kill it this year but I feel like Jazzwares has something to prove and they're going to come out heavy swinging with play sets and things of that nature but we will have to see man but that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below on the worst wrestling figures of 2021 down in the comment section below. 2022 hopefully will be a lot better in terms of these things that we've addressed in this video but things remain to be seen we'll have to see about that but thank you guys so very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy again let me know your thoughts on all this stuff down in the comment section below follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok at my damn toy
toys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, and don't cross the line like everybody in this effing video.